It's been three years since Microsoft stopped supplying 32-bit licenses to manufacturers. Obviously, 32-bit machines are quite older, but can they survive in a 64-bit world? Let's find out. With Microsoft discontinuing support, all that's left are Linux distros. Yeah, and there are definitely a few different options for 32-bit Linux distributions to install a modern operating system on your machine, but they're few and far between, and they are getting fewer and fewer. You're pretty much limited to three main distros, and that's gonna be MX Linux, Debian Linux, or Linux Mint Debian Edition. There are other options like Bodhi Linux, but Bodhi is built on Ubuntu 1804, which is now about a five-year-old operating system at this point, and is not really seeing proper updates or anything. So it's just interesting to see how you're starting to officially see the last remaining options for 32-bit environments. As well as that, the applications, you're basically stuck with what comes with that operating system. MX has a few like VLC, I think it's LibreOffice, but really, with they're not really compatible with flat packs. Yeah, so if you are actually somebody who could compile software and stuff like that, you probably could find a few open source options that would still be compilable for a 32-bit operating system. The problem is though, for a normal user, they're not easy to find. We dug and dug and you just basically can't get basic things like Audacity hardly anymore in a 32-bit version or something like GIMP. GIMP was, you know, they have them, but they even say on the website for GIMP that they are restricted to older versions of GIMP because they just don't update them anymore. So this laptop was my grandfather's, wasn't used for quite a while and was running Windows 7. Yeah, and it is a netbook, if any of you remember that trend. They did not last very long, it was kind of interesting. They didn't because this thing came with two gigs of RAM and a hard drive. I managed to upgrade it to three gigs of RAM and put a solid state in it, which really didn't affect the performance that much. Yeah, Intel Atom and NVIDIA Ion, which, I mean, NVIDIA Ion drivers are on like 340, which are now on like 500 or something. Yeah, they're on like, I think NVIDIA is currently on like 535 or 545, and yeah, this is having to run 340. But the thing is, is that MX Linux actually installed them without any issue. I tried Bodhi, but it wouldn't install the Wi-Fi drivers, and when it did, it just, I couldn't get the GPU to work correctly. Out of all the ones I tried, this one has the best applications on there. And actually, they still have their blog being updated, which the last update was November 14th. So it is actively being supported, at least for now. So each Linux distro tries to fit a certain need. And I'm not really sure exactly where MX is trying to fill a need. But hey, they filled a need for a 32-bit on this machine specifically. And they did a great job. Yeah. Now, as for the performance of this machine, it's pretty slow. If you are absolutely stuck with a 32-bit machine that is very slow, like three gigs of RAM, it's possible for it to work. I mean, you can watch YouTube videos. I'll pull up one right here and you could be able to see. Wow, what how a great video. The, yeah, a fantastic video, which you should definitely check out. Uh, and you can see right here how long it takes to load. I mean, the bar is stuck right there. We have confirmed that it will watch videos at a blisteringly high quality of 360p. And whenever you skip through it, it takes a bit to load. Again, very sluggish, but very slow. Now, one of the things about MX Linux is that it has like VLC media player. It's got NVIDIA drivers, and also it's got library office. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't run the best either, but you are actually able to use it to type documents. I mean, I'll show you right here. This is just a startup process, which we'll show in real time. That way you get the full experience. And I'm gonna go, what, the quick brown fox jumped over. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Zimped over. Yeah, the quick fox jumped over the dog. This is clearly not correct. I know it isn't, but you see that delay. It's a little better now. Again, not great, but usable. So the thing is, this is obviously not the fastest example of a 32-bit laptop, right? Yeah. I mean, 32-bit went into a variety of machines and even up to, to 2009, which this laptop came out in 2009, you did have 32-bit options that were definitely more powerful than this thing was. Netbooks were never known for being exactly little beasts. With this software stack, Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC, you've got a usable machine for some basic capabilities. Obviously, like a Chromebook even would be better, but you do what you can with the hardware you have. Yeah, and Chromebooks nowadays, you know, even have the ability to install desktop Linux applications. So you would probably actually have more software choices on a Chromebook than yeah. you would something like this now. Which is crazy to think, but I mean, this is a pretty old laptop. One thing about MX Linux is that it seems to be very good at getting all the necessary drivers. Wi-Fi drivers, NVIDIA drivers, even Bluetooth drivers work just fine. To conclude, 
Is it possible for a 32-bit machine to survive in a 64-bit world? Yes, but it's not gonna be the most pleasant experience. Yeah, and 32-bit hasn't really been relevant now, honestly, for about 13, 14 years. And 64-bit has still been around for a long time. And I would say that you're probably better off just getting rid of your 32-bit machine and getting a 64-bit machine, even if it's from the same era. If you can only afford a $50 laptop, you'd probably be better off doing that. But Windows is still worth getting rid of though, I yeah, would say. If, if you're absolutely stuck with one of these, get rid of Windows, get something like MX Linux. Even though it's slow, it is way faster than Windows 7 ever was. Do you have any old hardware that you're trying to revive? Let us know down in the comments below. Yeah, and we're trying to create like a little bit of an old school YouTube community here. So make sure that you guys subscribe and just stay interactive in those comments down below so that we can just be talking with you and try to build a bit of a community here. We'll catch you next time.